Okay, we're back again. Okay, I got it all cleaned up. So I got the bushing out. Now, what we gotta figure out now is some dimensions. Okay, here's our cam bushing. Okay, we wanna measure our whole center line. So, looking at this, it looks like we're about 350,000 to the center of the hole. So that's just between 3 eighths and 5 sixteenths. Take your cam cover and measure from the flange to the, what the hole actually is on the cover. See if it matches what that bushing was at. And it looks like it's pretty close to the same number, about 350. I don't know if you can see that or not. So 350 is the magic number. Next thing is the bushing is supposed to be recessed below the, ga below the gasket surface here. Now if you notice how this bushing here has been cut because it was in the way. You also got to make sure this oil hole lines up with the oil hole coming through the cover here. So, here's your oil hole right here on this one. See, this one's a lot deeper than that other cover. The other cover's probably made wrong. So, anyway, it's in there fairly deep in. These are supposed to recess down about a hundredth hour or so, as I recall. So this is a Jim's tool, uh, whatever the hell number that thing is, and I modified it to the depth I needed for my tool. See, this goes in here. This is cut down. The, this actually fits right aside the stock hole there. So all I did was I just cut down the height so I get my offset in here correctly. So now we have a tool that Jim's never made, and we're using their tool. I don't use it for what they made it for. I use it for what I use it for. Eh, looks like we're about an eighth of an inch deep is how far it goes. Let's see here. Yeah, 132. Quick measurement. 115. So you have to hold it. Every time you pull it up, it comes up with a different number. Okay, let's do it more accurate. It's not a very flat surface to work to. 127. So like I said, eighth of an inch, 125. Okay, so it's an eighth inch recessed in. So you take your bushing here, you measure your center line, and it looks like it's about 3 sixteenths roughly, or 175. Yeah, the reflection's bad with this light. Yeah, somewhere around 175, 180. Okay, you add in your 125 to that. Yeah, 2580, that's close to 100. Plus one, 200 thou. And you come over here and measure your hole and see what 200 thou is going to do for you. And the hole is in there quite a bit deeper than 200 thou. Looks like about a quarter inch in to me. There you go. About 280 thou down. Let's see if I measured correctly my numbers. I added wrong. This is 180 and 125 is 300. And the center of this hole is yeah, about 290 ish. Pretty close. Oh, Yellow. Yo. It's how deep? What was the number? One and three is total height? Okay. Alright, I'll cut it. Okay, bye. Alright. Keep your number in your head, one and three is. It's like I cut that pulley to different job. Okay, so this one here is about, we're roughly about 290, and it's 300 with our numbers add up to, so pretty close. So you just double check, make sure these holes are gonna line up when you're all done. Now it's up to you 
to rotate this hole so it lines up with the hole coming through here. Now if you're stupid and put it over here like that and shut the hole off, you know, you get what you get. So you have to be smart enough to put the damn thing where it belongs. So if you can put it in the right spot, it goes right in, it lines up, no problem. If you mask the hole a little bit, it ain't going to hurt anything. It's got a pretty good sized hole in there. So as long as you don't go more than about halfway block, you're all right. But don't go more than that. That's pushing it. Okay, so we got all these figured out. So we need to go drill this out. And then we need to put these things and install them in the cover. I don't know how tight these are going to go in here. Probably could go in. Hopefully they go in tight. We don't know. Now, the next thing is you got to make sure this groove don't line up with that hole there. It doesn't. So let's poke that in there like that. Okay. So what I always do is I like to mark where the holes are at so I don't get them mixed up. So dowel hole. This one you can see it will mark it anyway. This one gets kind of buried. And then you got to mark this one to make sure you know where the hole is right here. In case you're stupid. And that one's right there in case you're stupid. Okay, so that gives us all our numbers we want. Now we get to go work on this a little bit. So what we got to do right now is we got to drill this hole here. You know, it's 350 offset. Did you forget the number already? 350 thou. So we can go do that. So let's go over the drill press and knock that one out. So goes over this way. Over the machine shop. There's a big stinking drill press there. And then we got another one over here. It's a pretty good size too. So you can use either one of two. So this one has no vise. There's that pull. I got to cut the one in three A's. And so let's go with this one. It has a vise over here. First thing I do is to mark our. Uh, Mark our number. So we got to figure out what our one and three eighths number is at and mark it. So what I do is I just take my handy dandy marking device. It's hard to do it with your hand like this, but oh well. Yeah, I missed it. That's why you don't try to hold it one in your hand. Get the right tools. It's called a vise. So you try to make it where you can see it with the video, and then you can't do your job right. Plus, it slows you way down, so you can't get your jobs done as quick. Oh well. Things happen, deal with it right. Center punch. Great, my brand new tool I was going to use is not here. When do I put it? I put it someplace where I wouldn't lose it. I've already lost it. Didn't take me long. Oh well, well. We'll figure it out later. We'll use the old tool. It's called a center punch. Okay, first thing I do is mark it. This time in the correct spot. It helps to have it in the right spot. When you mark it in the wrong spot, it doesn't help you. Okay, there. That time we marked in the correct spot. Okay, we're going to take your center punch and mark it. Now don't hit it too hard because you'll break the bush. Down. So there's your center, your black mark, and the center part, center punch holes in the middle of it. And you also have your right between the three and the four on the thing here. I mean, you're at 350. That's what right in the middle of three to 400 means. Now you put it back in the vise, you hold it straight up and down because you want the hole to go in straight. And usually I just take a big center punch, something like a big one like this. Use a decent sized hole and you poke it through. Let me get the old bushing, we'll show the whole size.
So there's your center drill. There's your original hole. Now they went at an angle like this because they drilled it in the bike. I'm just going to go straight in. But you notice that's the same basic size, same basic hole. And these don't walk around like a regular drill, so they work better. Okay, so I'm going to go over the drill press over here. Change directions again. A lot of moving around this place. There you go. Ooh, I just make it. Okay. One hole. And I put a little bit of a chamfer in there, which deburs it, but also gives you a place for the oil hole misalignment so it still goes through. So it does two things at once. And we did some nice sharp center drill, so it didn't leave hardly any burr at all on the inside. So that's good too. All right, quick and simple. That was the easy part. Okay, now I put all your tools back when you're done with them. Go back over here. There we go. Going in circles. I've been accused of that more than once. Okay, do not put the old one back in. Okay, here's a hammering tool. Some people don't like my press, so we got a ways of doing things. So this is your driver. This is an old Craftsman set, and Dad made these back in the 50s probably, early 60s, so there you go. You want to like that. You can either drive it this side, or you can drive it around this other side if you want it bigger. So we only need to cover up that much of our bushing, so I'm going to use the smaller side. Okay, sleeve retainer Loctite. That means it's pretty much permanent. A little bit on your finger like that. Put it in the hole. Try not to pack it in the oil hole too much. We're not trying to plug up the oil gallery. We're trying to hold the bushing in. <clears throat> on the new bikes, which basically is in the later 70s and all the 80s and later, hardly quit using pins and they just use Loctite. <clears throat> they use sleeve retainer because it's green when you look at it. So they use this at the factory now. I was using it way before they were. <clears throat> okay, so there you go. That's all lubed up. Now if you want to put a little bit on the bushing, you can. You don't need much though. Same deal. So we just go like that. Smear across it, stay off the oil hole a little bit. Okay, that way you got lubricant on both sides now. Not really a lubricant, it's Loctite. Okay, now if you don't want to do much damage, you do a double wrap on your thing here. Give you less chance of breaking something. It does soften the hit up though. Okay, so now you got to take your hole right here and you got to line up your hole that you put right over here. Get them close to each other. Looks pretty close to me. Then you take your appropriate hammer and drive it in there. Okay, take a look at it, make sure it looks like it's lined up pretty close. Now the bushing is going in slightly sideways, see it's a little bit higher on this side than this side, so hit a little bit harder on that side, it should straighten it up and go in. If you keep driving in sideways, it will go in that way, but it's not good for it. So you go ahead and get a little bit centered, still a little bit high on this side. Even though I straighten it out the first hit. So you just keep working in there. See how it keeps going a little bit sideways? Keep pushing on this side to center it. There, 
starts to go straighter now. It looks a lot better. And this way is not too bad. This direction, relatively straight. Once you get it more or less lined up, you can hit it harder again. Once, you, once it gets straighter, it goes a little bit further each time you hit it. <clears throat> now the problem is this is curved, so I'm hitting on this. And you only show your bushing is offset from where my finger is, this way over here. So every time I hit it, it hits push. It pushes more on this side than this side. That's why it's going in deeper here. So when you go to push on this tool, you automatically push on this side a little bit harder to compensate for that. Now you could pack some junk under here, but eh, you might scrap it up. So one hit and two hit. So now it's right up against the surface. I'll give it one more. You should hear a nice loud metallic ring when it's all the way down, like that. And now you're all the way against the edge. Now I can spring back on you because that's not a dead blow hammer. So if you don't have a dead blow hammer, hit a little bit softer. And that way the shock wave doesn't bounce so much. And you should be good, but it's, it's hitting pretty hard against it. So. so that's how you do that. Then you look through the oil hole. And if you look down in through the hole right there, hopefully you can kind of see in there. It goes all the way through. Yeah, it looks like it's lined up pretty damn close. Okay, so that one's the, that's that one. This one here is a little bit harder. Not too much, just a little. Okay, there's your hole we're going to count. We're not going to come out this hole. We're going to come off this hole. So same deal. You line it up. Same tool because we're going flush. Give it a couple light hits to kind of see where it wants to go. This one here wants to go more or less fairly straight. At least it did. It's a couple more light taps. Make sure it's going in straight. If it is, keep hitting it. It's getting a little bit further on this side than this side, so I'm going to hit a little bit more on this here. And so you're just pushing on down in there. It's going in pretty, getting harder. Got a little bit more press fit than the other one, so it takes harder hits. If you see any material uh, shaving up your cock and hard, that's bad. Okay. So now we're down to flush. We gotta get below flush, remember? So now we gotta take this one here, put it on there, and push it on in. Now this is not made to be beat with a hammer, so we have to figure out how we're gonna do this. Look like the right size either. So we're gonna hit it like this. Hopefully it'll go in. Not very easily. And the problem we're running there right now is the Loctite is starting to set up. I can barely feel a little bit of register where I hit it. Okay, that time it went down a little bit. See now we're starting to go down a little bit. Loctite's starting to really start to grab now too, which is not good. See how it's going in there slowly, but it's going down. Metallically hitting. I mean, it's all the way down. See, it's in there like that. Pull it up. Bushing's now recessed all the way in there like it's supposed to be. You look at your oil gallery, see if it looks like it's lined up pretty close to where it's supposed to be. Looks good. You take an airline and double check your holes. Push right here. Up pretty good out of the Plug up this hole, I got more. There you go. And then you got this one over here for the top. See, it goes through pretty good. So, you know the holes are lined up and working. That's important. 
Now you can see where the dowel pins go. One goes here, one was over here. Now there's no way you're going to catch that hole right there, so don't even try. Drill it someplace else other than that spot. That's the key. Okay, so now we're done beating on it. So I got my frustration worked out now. I was able to beat on something a little bit. Okay, now we can go drill, and we can come back and beat some more. Put the pins in. Okay, now the pins are right here. And they're supposed to be about a quarter inch tall easily. And there you go. It's a quarter inch tall. It hasn't changed any. Okay, those are eighth inch diameter pins, so they go use a 120 drill. That's the side size of the drill, not the number. And then you drill it down just under a quarter inch. That way it'll be flush. You wanna to go too deep, you wanna be pretty close to that number. Okay, let's go over there and do that. We're going to take our rag here to drill with. We got the drill against it. Not the best way of doing it, but it works. All right. Change that up a little bit. There's that pulley. Now we're going to use this for the drill press this time. Fire. Okay. Cut this down for a customer. This is too high by about three eighths of an inch, roughly, or something. He said. I need one and three eighths tall. That is from the face of the table to the top of this. I'll have to figure out what that number is later. There's always some kind of a side job we're working on around here. The trick is to remember the number one and three eighths. top of all the other numbers in my head I'm remembering. Could get confusing at times. Alright. Drill index out. So we need a 120 drill. So 120,000 number 31 drill. Right there. There's our drill we're going to use. Now drills have points to them. Oop, get it where you can see it, maybe. And the dowel pin has a little bit of a roundish radius edge, but not a point. So if you drill a quarter inch from the point to here, the dowel is going to stick up a little bit. So you have to drill slightly lower than that, but not much. You know, just a twentieth hour. So kind of important. You don't want to drill the dowel sticking above the surface of the bushing flange, otherwise it'll be a problem. Okay. Here's our cover. Give me a center punch again. Okay, I need to mark this someplace. So I can't put it where the hole is. I don't want to put it where the old groove is at, the old hole. So I'm going to put it over here. So I'm just going to move over a little bit further over. Or you can go away to the other side, just wherever you want to. So if you want to keep it more equal, just go to the other side. Yep, too close. And then just start over, it's easier. I put it in the wrong spot. Okay, so I just center it between the flange there is what I do. And we'll drill it. rag we can stack it up in multiple layers to kind of make the cover flat or you just kind of hold it flat they just hold it flat okay I usually like to spot it a little bit okay I just give a little spot make sure it's still centered and also compensate for the, the Oh, shit. The uh, point on the drill. Okay, now I go over here and pull it down. Put a little pressure on it to compress against the rag. And you lock it down. Then you go up here and you measure your put your depth stop up there, which is up here, right up in this area. And you put it in there. Now, 
you can measure your scale like this or you can cheat and just use a drill bit <clears throat> so if you grab a quarter inch drill which every index has voila you know if you just put that up here you don't have to measure it well, I can hear it's got some clearance to it this one doesn't adjust. Now this one over here, I can adjust it just by turning. Okay, here style stops. Okay, so when the bit goes in, when you give it a little extra, there you go. That's how you set your stop. Now you go ahead and drill, drill down into the cover, right there. right depth. If it's not, we'll figure that out later and put the draws in it. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other one over here, which is the same basic thing, but we're in a different spot. Right there. Same deal, you take a quarter and drill bit. There we go. Extra. You can actually feel it hitting the bottom of the hole, you know you're deep enough. So now this one's drilled. Now this one here I just follow the existing hole and I just put a little crescent cut in the bushing. Okay, now it's ready for a bushing now, or not, for a dolphin, excuse me. And we were drilling at uh, about a thousand RPM. Small drill, high RPM. Okay, so we put our drill back, number 31. We put back our quarter inch drill. Make sure you put it back in the right spot. That way, that way the drill index is worth when you put them in the right spot. Very important to keep stuff organized. Yeah, we don't have to waste time measuring stuff all the time. Okay, this is clean. Let me get back over here and go hammer on it. All right, more fun. We got a lot of exercise going back and forth around here. Uh oh, somebody put that cover on the raw workbench. Jeez, I'm gonna get fine now. Sure hope the customer doesn't see it. Okay, now, we got our two little dowels. I'm going to get me a little punch to use to beat it in there with. So one's a little bit bigger than the other. This is the eighth inch, so next size out. Okay, so we take our see I moved them, I was looking for them, I just left them. Okay, now you have a these are actually correct parts. So if you look at them, they have a little bit of a taper to them here. And it's flat on this side, so the taper part goes in first. Now you can put a little Loctite on these if you want. Or just beat them in. So first hit, I just knock it in most of the way with a hammer. And you come by with a punch and go below the surface. There, that was all the way down. You can hear it. Now you go below the surface. Okay, so now you can see it's below the surface slightly. So what I do now is I peen the top of it down a little bit. That's why I use the bigger punch. OK, 
Okay, so now you ping the top of the bushing over the top of the dowel, so now the dowel can't come out unless it eats through the bushing. And you also notice how it collapses the bushing into where the cam goes, so it makes a big tight spot there too. <clears throat> okay, another dowel. This one's trying to roll away, but I got it. Okay, now this one goes into here, and you just push it in. Just kind of lay it in there like that, and just hit it with a hammer. So now it's started. Now you go ahead and use the punch to knock it all the way down. <clears throat> use a small punch. Going in there pretty tight, so it's not quite all the way down yet. One minute, there we go. So we'll go a little bit deeper with it. Take that time it went in there pretty far. One more. Okay, that's all the way down now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and peen the edge of the bush a little bit. It's pretty much flush, I think. It's not even all the way. I just I just kind of do like that on top surface and kind of just burnish it in which means make it nice and flush. You don't want any high spots sticking up. So so that one's on there peened in. This one's peened in. Okay now you gotta do some fitting on these things. So where's our cam disappeared to right in front of me. Okay so I take my cam And if the bushing is close, you beat the cam in the hole and kind of beat it in and mush the, <sighs> mush the brass back into the corner where it came out anyway, around the steel pin. Now this bushing here is a ream to fit, so I can't shove this in at all and do that. So we're just going to want to just be drilling this straight through. So actually if the, bush, if the cam goes in, you get a little better, tighter fit on the pin. But in this case, we can't do that because it's an undersized bushing. So you can try to put it in the hole a little bit. It's trying to go, but not quite. Basically a tight ass squeeze. Okay, that's enough of that. So that kind of screws up the top of the bushing slightly. Don't know, I can't read it yet, but it, uh, it mushes the pin in here a little bit tighter. I always like to have a little bit of extra press on just to make sure it's mushed, mushed in there good. Okay, so that part's done. So now this has to be line reamed. So that requires more work. Okay, so now we got our case halves over here. So we have to, take the, we have to split these. Somebody tighten them up. I was doing a test fitment. See, some of these nuts have washers and some don't. Ugh. See how there's a washer on this one here, but there's no washer here because the studs aren't long enough to put washers. See how flush they are. So the hard part is remember which one goes where. This is supposed to be a dowel fit. Must be tight, kind of tight. Use a drift punch, which is a long straight section one. Knocks it out. The reason you call it a dowel stud is because see how it's bigger diamond here than this one is? It actually tapers up from the thread, it's oversized. So that goes tight in your case and it actually keeps the case from shifting like this. It lines up so your deck heights are lined up and your main bearings and all the other good stuff that matters.
earlier cases have those, later cases don't. They have dowel pins, or they just use the same size stud all the way around, and the tight stud made it did that. Depends on what year you're talking. Up around 78, 80, they got rid of the dowel studs and went to just all the same size. When they came out of the twin cam, they started actually putting dowel pins in the twin case house. Do it like you're supposed to do with the dowel pin for a while. See, this is a tight stud, but see, it's a 5 16 It's a 5 16 very snug fit hole. Versus these other holes over here, which are not dowel, but they're 5 16 See how they got clearance on these? This one up here doesn't have as much clearance, and it gets tight when you go through it. There's different ways of doing things over the years. When you're working on the motor, you got to know this, or you have to pay attention where everything comes from. Basically, you can count on hardly every 10 years and make a change on something. Pretty standard throughout all the years. Sometimes it's every five years, but pretty much every ten will get you some kind of a change that matters. Other stuff they'll go fifty years with no change. It's just a matter of which you have to know which one's which. So some of these studs go back to 1936, and this is a 1965 motor. But they use those same studs all up to 78 too. So from 78 all the way back to 36, that's a couple of years that they didn't change anything. I should be using a bigger downers grip too, but I think I'm going to have to because it's too tight. Best to use about the biggest one you can use. See, it's a quarter inch, it's five sixteenths. That way, it doesn't walk around so much and tears the case up. Some reason could be the chrome, could be crap and threads. Who knows? Well, we know it's a little snug. So when we do our final case case clean. We need to double check this stuff, make sure it's clean. And when we pull this out, we should go see what the problem is. Usually, if it's chrome, you'll see a certain spot that's got aluminum transfer on it. Looks pretty clean. You know, like this, you look in the hole and make sure the threads aren't showing any transfer of anything either. So this one looks pretty clean, so I don't know why it's tight. It's just tight everywhere, I guess. I don't see any transfer of metal. That's why you just don't keep jamming stuff together. It causes problems if you do. Okay, so we're not going to be using this side right this minute, so I'll get it out of the way. I'm going to use this side here for lining. Camera's too close. Okay, we're back in our drawer, drawer fun down here. Okay, first thing I do is get a bushing. It goes in our main bearing right here, right over here. So, we have a couple here to choose from. One I made, ones I've remade. So this one here should be the right one. <clears throat> it goes right in the case right here. This one's a pretty tight hole in the case. So this just doesn't go all the way in. So 
That goes in just a little ways, gets tight. So this is what the reamer goes against. Just right here. It's a special reamer. Jim's made it. Centers off of this. And this is their line reaming kit. So I polish these down so it's a little bit looser, fits better. I'm pulling this hole out so this slides a little easier. So that's what their that's their tool. Now this one's getting a little worn to it, so it's a little bit undersized now when you cut. Now this shaft over here, I measured it on the crank over here, the pinion shaft right here. And it's a good one thou undersized, so you need to have a little bit undersized hole when you're reaming. Okay, the other ones I've made. These are carbide tip reamers. So this one here is a, just a carbide. Whoop! Extra parts. This has carbide welded into it. So this is just a more precision, not worn. So this cuts right on size. And then I had to make an adapter bushing right here to make it so it pilots like they did. Except I'm piling off this diameter, so I make an adapter. And this adapter goes into this, like this. So you make up your own tools. Now I got a solid carbide tip that will last a lot longer than a high speed seal like they made. And I didn't have to pay a hundred and whatever, fifty, eighty bucks for that stupid reamer. I got this one on eBay for probably about fifty bucks. And it's better. Okay, so that's that one. So what I do is I put this one through it. If it's too tight, I can go to this one. Or I can do a different one. This was a 916th adjustable carbide reamer. So this one here has solid carbide teeth on it. And then you have a set screw in here. And there's slits in here. So you can this will expand or contract. You can make it what you want to be. And this one here, I put bushings, I machine bushings, pushed them on, then turn them on center. You have centers right here. And you put on a center and you turn this around. And now you got yourself a pilot reamer, adjustable carbide tips. They don't make too much of this stuff like this anymore, so you have to buy old stuff. So this one I can do pretty much any size I want. I can play with it. So depending on what I need, I got my different tools. Now what I got to determine is do I want to use this one? I don't want to use this, the Jim's one over there. I don't want to use that big one. The pinion shaft's undersized. Okay, we also need to get the reamer for the cam. Right. That's 11 sixteenths, I think, for the cam shaft. Remember what size these things are? Yes, 11 sixteenths. So 11 sixteenths reamer. So there we go. And this one doesn't have a driver or adapter to adapt this hole, so this is not the one I use for this application. This is for something else. So you have to find one that works for what you need. Now this one here says Big Twin Cam 13 16 adjustable. There's the big one. There, that's the right one. So 11 16 wasn't the size of one anyway. 13 16 Now this has the adapter I made for it. And this is an adjustable carbide, so I can make it what I want. So this one's halfway goes in the hole a little bit. And it pilots off of our, off our bearing right here. So that's the one that we use. That's if you want to make it fancy. And if you don't want to do all that extra work, you can just use the one that's pre-made preset and we use this one. So you can see that was another cut down one. This one was probably about this long originally. And that one you just poke it in there and it goes straight through. And 
right there. So I got to measure these and see what size we need. I don't remember, or I don't know yet. So you got to have your options for how to do different things. First thing I do is measure the crank. So we're at 61, which is 11 on the scale here, right on the money too. So 9 sixteenths is 62 and a half. So that's a thou and a quarter clearance. Now I usually like running my pin and bushings a little bit tighter than that because I want to keep them as tight as you can without sticking. Now I know this one cuts a little bit under, so I think it cuts at 62 on the money. It actually measures bigger than that, but that's not what it cuts. Now, I'm not sure if I want to poke that in first shot. You only get one shot of making it too loose, or too tight. I mean. After that, they're always loose. Um, like I said, if I go with my adjustable one, I can set it to what I want. Which might be what I'm going to do on this job. Okay, I had this thing set a little bit big, so 62 and a half is what I had it set on last time I used it. Uh, I'm not sure which one we're going to use. Check a gym shaft and measure it. Right, I'm going to grab a, a new gym shaft. Let's see what diamond of their shaft is. I can't remember if these things are one thou under or only a third of a thou under. So we're going to measure the snout here. Yeah, that's what I thought. These things are a little bit bigger. See, these are 11 and a half. They're half a thou bigger. But I know when you cut with this, most of the time it's they're a little bit too tight. Just a little bit. So I know if I use that, it should be relatively, it will go, it'll fit the first time. This might be slightly loose when I want. So the decision is which one we're going to use. That's what we don't realize yet. So we're going to pick up a half a thou. That's a lot. Probably more than I want to pick up. Decisions, decisions. Now these cases are original and they're lined up. If it was a mismatched set of cases, I'd definitely put them looser, but being this one, it might be right on the money. It might go just a little bit tighter than this one. Decisions. I'm thinking I'll probably go with the, this one here and I'll custom fit it. So it takes a little more effort to do that, but I think I'll probably wind up doing it that way. Now for the cam, we gotta determine what size we want this to be. Cam's not as critical as the pinion shaft. So you can be off a little bit, doesn't matter. But you want to keep it pretty tight. Okay, this is 11 and a half. 
So this one you should really use a standard reamer and it should fit just fine. It gives you a thou clearance. About three quarter of a thou, so that should be pretty good what we want. So we should be able just to use the standard reamer here. Not have to do anything fancy. About nine tenths on that one too, so one thou clearance would be pretty good on the cam. So we're gonna go ahead and run the standard reamer on that because it's got that half a thou bigger shaft diameter. We're working the tenths of a thou, and that's a half a thou, so you know you got to know what you're doing. Okay, so we're gonna take the official tools that we're gonna need. So we get all of that stuff. Now the next thing we're going to need is our uh, cam cover bushing. Uh, bushing excuse me. We're going to need our cam cover screws in order to line this up. So we have to have the screws that we're going to use to go on this. Or some used ones to use. I don't see the used screws, so I think I got some on the other side. Okay, we're going to go over to the machine shop and we'll work on this.